Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The QRL Show. I am joined by Michael Strike, my co-host of The QRL Show. And in today's episode, we're going over a quick topic, which is, is the blockchain you're looking at post-quantum secure, Michael? You, uh, you ready to dive into this one? I think this is very important when people are looking at projects, observing, deciding if they should take it seriously or not. Is this something you wanna talk on a little bit? Yeah, I do. This is a bit of a contentious yeah. topic, uh, partially due to the complexity of post quantum protocols, yeah. and I would say partially due to the tribalism <laughs> yeah. of blockchain. Well, right? I, nobody yeah. wants to. No yeah. one wants to be able to be told that yeah. the that the blockchain that they're married to and the ticker they're married to yeah. is uh, not what they think it is. Yeah. So I'm going to go through uh, a couple of criteria that you've you know we've noted down, and uh, let's riff on each of those in important, cover the importance for each of those when you're analyzing, reviewing a project uh, based on its legitimacy. Specifically for post-quantum security. Yes, specifically. So uh, is the blockchain you're looking at post-quantum secure? The first one on here is, does the project have a chain or hype? Elaborate on this one a little bit. What's, so there are a lot, about? there there are a lot of projects out there that uh, have white papers. Okay. Uh, but a white paper in a Discord channel, a post quantum secure blockchain does not it make. Yeah. So I think that's pretty obvious. Um, uh, putting together, you know, putting together content, building a website, doing all of this, this is all very easy to do in, blocking compar yeah. in comparison to actually have a chain that's running in production that is post quantum secure since the first block. And if you really, if you really want to be post quantum secure since the first block, because migrating the DSA from classical cryptography to post quantum cryptography is an amazing, is probably one of the most difficult and frustrating types of hard forks that you can do. So does the project, project have an actual chain or are you just buying into the hype or something else, yeah. right? I think that's a, that's, a no, that's a no brainer, but as you know, um, we're all humans. We get, our emotions get involved. You know, we wanna go, we want to be at cutting edge. Yeah. But there are a lot of quantum oil salesmen yeah. out there yeah, that, are, that are selling, uh, but the, there might, there's quite a lot of uh, uh, misinformation and bait and switch yeah. going on. We've so, been running for yeah. six years. Yes, yeah, so the, so. view, the viewer, um, uh, to, the, concise, the, the takeaway here is when someone's viewing a project in regards to the post-quantum security, what's the easiest way for them to look? Hey, see, does the project have a chain? Uh, is what's there the, a chain? Yeah, is there a chain? Is uh, there a chain? Where's yeah. the code? Yeah, that's, that's, that's it. That's the short of it. Next one on here, a list, uh, industry recognized. Can you elaborate on this one a little bit? And uh, why criteria wise, why is this one beneficial um, for, for a project in the space? So there are state and governmental recognized agencies that specialize in post quantum security. United States, this, this agency is called NIST, the National Institute for Standards and Technology, and they've been working on post quantum security uh, for six, seven, maybe even eight years. Yeah or so, uh, QRL runs on a, an NIST recommended hash-based signature scheme called and XMSS. XMSS yep. Right, so our project has been running for six years. Uh, that's industry recognized. So one of the things that it's critical, one of the things that has to be taken into consideration is if the blockchain that you're looking at is re uses the protocols that are industry recognized as being post quantum secure. When NIST first, sent, first put out its draft for its, for its proposals, because they asked for uh, academia to chime in, corporate chime in, even public to chime in, anyone can chime in. Yeah. Uh, they eventually, they went from about 72 or so uh, signature schemes for DSAs, for st yeah. uh, stateful DSAs, down to two, XMSS, in LMS. Yeah, it's been funneled quite a bit and uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's to the test of time to this point. Obviously, we live in an ev ev evolving world, but so that, that, that part's important to look at. Yeah, and, that, yeah. and that's because people, professionals, people that know what they're doing, yeah. submitted 
uh, several submitted their own versions of post quantum yeah. security protocols, and uh, approximately or so, 70 of them were compromised in some way, were found to be insecure in some way, or just broke in some way. So you can't you can't just invent your own post quantum secure protocol. You touched on NIST, and obviously QRL. We use XMSS hash based. That is still one of the primary finalist can candidates, uh, according to NIST. Can you give us like a 30 seconds as best as possible inside? What is, what's the, what is the, what is this doing when they're narrowing down that list? Are they, are they looking at the cryptography? Can you give the, the viewer, what, anyone across the spectrum, whether they're technical, not technical, what, what, what are they doing as they finalize though? Are they, are they trying to, to break the cryptography? Um, what, what's that process? So like their approach bit? is multifaceted. So they're, they approach it without ego. Yep. It's, I, I want to gather as much information as possible. Everyone submit their protocols. Yep. Okay. Now, everyone, let's try and break all of these protocols. Okay. And in this, in the case of XMSS and LMS, those two yep. came out as the uh, as the winners. Yep. Yeah. So, in terms of when you're evaluating a blockchain's, you know, looking at is the blockchain you're looking at PQ secure. Uh, industry recognition, that's, that's quite a big one. Is the protocol industry recognized? And, and if the protocol that the blockchain uses is industry recognized, is the, impl is the implementation of that protocol consistent with the standards that NIST, for example, recommends? So in other words, you can call your DSA anything that you want, but let's say, let's say, it's, uh, uh, let's say it's called uh, shade lamp or something like that, and that's the that's that's the protocol that's the DSA that is 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 industry recommended. The implementation with your within your own code has to actually match that implementation that's recommended. And usually, uh, ideally, that would rec that would take an audit, a uh, post quantum secure audit. But I don't know of any project currently that has had any blockchain project currently that has had a classical and post quantum secure. Audit. Yeah, I don't know if any. I don't haven't seen any project do that. Our project is doubly audited, in different ways. Uh, but anyway, that's it. Is it industry recognized, and is the implementation of it consistent with that industry recognition? That's number two. Perfect. So we've touched on: Does the project have a chain, or is it just hype? Industry recognition and the importance of that. Third one on our list here, uh, Michael, is ERC twenty. So, uh, can you can you touch on this a little bit in in terms of quantum? You know, post quantum security. Uh, what's this one about? ERC twenty. So ERC twenty and EVMs are part of the Ethereum network, yep. right? Okay. So uh, Bitcoin, right? Uh, Two thousand nine, approximately. White paper, right? Not post quantum secure. Ethereum, not post quantum secure. Da -da 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 -da. Go down the list. Not post quantum secure. Yep. Let's suppose, oh, but let's stick with uh, let's stick with Ethereum because it's number two market cap, and it also has within the top three has tremendous utilitarian value. So if you're an ERC twenty, could you make an, a post quantum secure blockchain as an ERC twenty on the Ethereum network? No, you can't. There's going to be people out there that are going to be raising their eyebrows or cursing cursing at their LCDs or their CRTs and saying that it's wrong, but consider this. You can take code and wrap it around an XMSS wrapper and store it on Ethereum, and you can make that code itself post-quantum secure. But no matter what you write to the chain, a sufficiently powerful quantum computer could jump, dump, uh, jump in, empty the wallet, and then your code is sitting there and you've got no gas to do anything with, and in the meantime, the market value is tanking. Yeah, and so you're stuck. even if you're seeing your, if you're in ERC twenty and you're seeing your post quantum secure or your quantum friendly or your quanta, I don't whatever, don't whatever the whatever yeah. the phrase is, a sufficiently powerful quantum computer can just empty the wallet and you can't do anything. Yeah. Okay. And if that happens. What happens to the you know what happens to the market value of of Ethereum itself? And there's a very strong argument that all of the sub, all of the subchains, the ERC20s, their value is tied to the the main chain, 
right, the, uh, the, the layer one. Yep. So that value, that value of that project, even if, the, even if the data stored on the chain cannot be accessed by a quantum computer, that wallet is totally vulnerable to a quantum computer attack because it uses elliptical curve cryptography and asymmetric encryption. So that's yeah. it. Three, those three yeah. real easy uh, yeah. qualifiers to check. Yeah. Does it have a real chain? Is it industry recognized? And is the implementation of it uh, accurate? And ERC20. Is it is it an ERC20? If it's if it's an ERC20, it's automatically not post quantum. Yeah. You have to have your own chain like like we do. Yeah. So speaking of our own chain, uh, QRL, we are a layer one uh, built from day one with post quantum cryptography and that security in mind. Uh, if you're watching this video, we hope at first and foremost that you're able to have this video as a reference to be able to, as you're evaluating new projects, be able to understand, okay, is it checking some of these boxes? If it doesn't check one box, maybe does, is it the end of the world to be determined? Obviously, we don't know what project you're evaluating, but as you're going through this, these are all very important. And uh, our project QRL, we touch on each of these boxes. Uh, you can look, you know, open source code, you can look, see our GitHub activity, uh, jump in our QRL Discord community and see the you know, activity within there. All these variables adding up, along with the fact that we've been around since 2018, all add up to uh, something that's really important. It is important to look at in terms of all these signals together that shows a project that is um, you know, moving in the right direction in terms of PQ secure um, blockchain. So this is a, what, version two of this, uh, of this topic? A little we bit, did, yeah. It's we a little did bit one about six flavor. months. Yeah, we, we did one about it's six checklist. months ago. Yeah. And I think we asked our community to post this yeah. uh, to their favorite Pulse Quantum Secure project. Yep. Right? And uh, ask about the checklist. And we followed along on some of those, just, just kind of paid yeah. attention. And when the question gets asked, most of the, I didn't see any, I didn't see any project responses from any of those. So no. uh, please take this video and post it to your project. We're not trying to create FUD. We yeah. love Bitcoin. I love Bitcoin. Yeah. You love Bitcoin? Yes. Yeah. yeah I love Ethereum. Yeah, and, and if you're and if you're watching this, we're not um, here to create fun. Yeah, feel free if there's if there's any uh, you know questions you have or you want to add to the conversation and dialogue, drop something in the comments, jump in the Discord community, um, have dialogue. Um, feel free to share it if you if this is re our message here is resonating with you. Feel free to uh, spread it with others that are interested in these same type of topics. But uh, Michael, where is a, a place or two um, for people that are viewing this to go? Obviously, subscribing to us on YouTube, if you're not already doing so, is, is a good recommendation. Where's another place or resource or two that you'd maybe point people to as a, as a good starting point? We put, uh, we put a lot of our content and links to our content on X, right? Uh, yep. At QR. Yeah, the Q, just search QRL, QR Ledger. Uh, you can go to our QRL Discord, um, go to the QRL.org. I think that's it, uh, Michael. Thank you. Or for... jump into Discord. Yes. Yeah. Just... Jump into Discord and just ask. Yes. Ask. Um... We're, we're really just we're really just here giving information. We really yep. just want the truth. Yep. And we're providing we're providing what the industry the direction the industry is moving. So, no fud. Take this video, post it to your project, and uh, tag us. Yeah. Tag, hey, tag the project. Yeah. And we'll go from there. Um, and uh, yeah. Other than that, we will see you in upcoming content. All right. And appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thanks.